Hello, Paul, and welcome, welcome to the Art Salon. We've got your pictures on the wall. I can see that you are, you're not in your bedroom or your living room, are you? Where are you? I'm not. I'm in the studio. Oh. Um, it's a lovely, warm studio for a change. Oh, my yeah, goodness. That's very nice. Is it? I don't mm. believe that for a moment. The only, the only time I've been in there, it's been Baltic. <laughs> it was cold. The last time you were here, it was freezing. No, we get a, we get a week, we get an ambient week a year. This is it. It's it's lovely at the moment. So you've moved in for this week, and and then you'll just have to start because I I mean the last time I saw you, you know, you had about forty jumpers on, and I, mm. just, I did think, how does he paint in those sort of conditions? But you obviously I, you do. <laughs> I always wonder how long we can uh, keep it going for. You know, <laughs> at some point it will just be too cold, and I just won't want to come in. You know, uh, it's fine. Weeks. It's okay. <laughs> So how long have you been in that studio? And I mean, it's, it's obviously important for you to, I, I know that your studio is quite a big space and it's got some mm. nice light. Why that studio? Why do you paint in the studio? What, what's the studio for you? What, is that your, your shed? Is that your space, <laughs> your sanctuary? Yeah, I think, it's, I think for a lot of artists, it's an extension of them, really. Mm. I think because, because it grows with you as well. You walk into an empty room one day, and slowly the compost and everything, it just builds and it becomes a big part of what you do, who you are. It, it's so familiar. Yeah. The light becomes so familiar. You just know from any point in the day where you'd need to work, where you need to stand. Um, it's, it's great. I, I love all, all of it, really. It's, it's a really old industrial estate. So mm. there's, I mean, I've got gardeners below me and opposite, you've got someone making screens for the NHS. You've got people doing all sorts of things, uh, mending hot air balloons and things like that. So. There's always a, a sort of bustle outside. Mm -hmm. And I've been here for 15 years. Really? Pretty much. Quite, well, yeah. quite well now. Yeah. So I'm thinking you can no longer see the walls and floors. Uh, they are now this, this thick in paint, are they? Are they? <laughs> some of them. <laughs> yeah, uh, some. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, we are talking in, in lockdown and parts of the UK are... are able to go out a bit more but you are not are you you're still in full yeah. lockdown so has has the studio become more important to you in this period yeah for sure i mean for eight weeks i did one day a week mm -hmm. because my partner's a, a key worker so mm -hmm. obviously her job is far more important than to be honest day to day it was far more important at that point that i looked after the kids <laughs> so so what we were doing actually i mean we, we used to we'd come into the studio so i bring the kids down and because it's so big and they're so used to it they'd come and draw paint we did some printing yesterday some etching uh, on etching plates and we did some monotypes and things so actually it's been we've spent more time together in here recently mm -hmm. than than before which is really nice because i spend so much time on my own Mm -hmm. which I'm comfortable with, but to have them running around and mm -hmm. they tried spray paint the other day, which was quite interesting. Um, most of which, uh, bearing in mind they're four and seven, most of which, which went on them. But <laughs> <laughs> they enjoyed it. <laughs> Happy days. Yeah, um, indeed. Well, I mean, yeah, you... to scrub it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but mum wasn't too pleased when you got them back. But No. Many years ago, I used to run um, art courses. Well, actually, not that many years ago, but they were primarily for children, and it was largely because I got frustrated actually with the primary education that you always had to sharpen your pencil and you had to rub any mistakes out and you had to do all that. So I, I started these art courses, and one of the most interesting aspects of it was I'd have my artists teach the children directly, maybe just an hour or two in the day. But one thing that I didn't expect out of it was because they were with the children and the children had a completely different set of eyes, really, to it. They come things very fresh and very curious. They, that informed almost their work when they went back to it, or they then started to look at things differently. So yeah. having spent time with your children a little bit more, because obviously school's been closed and, and they've been in your studio, has that had an impact on you do you think as an artist have you had a bit of a refresh yeah i, I go into the schools and, and work with them there as well mm. so over the last four years with may particularly from the age of three i've always done something with the school as well so the so her friends come in here as well mm. so but they ask such interesting questions mm. yesterday <laughs> um may said do you find this hard 
oh. which I thought was, no one really asked you that, but no. I said, yeah, I do actually. I find painting extremely hard. Yeah. And she said, yeah, I thought it, it is hard, isn't it? And I said, yeah, it is. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, you know, it's the questions like that, you know, why did you use blue there? <laughs> no, it's that, that kind of question yeah. that I, uh, they throw at you that you think, yeah, I should really think about this a bit more. But yeah, just in terms of being free, using materials in a, in a slightly different way, working in a different way as well, because when you're working with a four-year-old, their attention span is usually about two minutes. So <laughs> being, able to, <laughs> being able to figure out a way of working that is, you know, adaptable, yeah. I suppose. And of course, then you can apply that to your own ways of thinking. Yeah, no, I think it's taught us all lots of different lessons, actually, the whole of the, the lockdown period. But certainly there is a sense of freedom that comes with a, a, a child's eyes. They don't have the baggage or the emotional baggage that you do as an adult, do you? You do all your responsibilities in the same way. So you're sort of looking at it. And they're not looking at artwork commercially. They're looking at purely as it was intended, as a, as a creation. Um, yeah. So... Yeah. As a child yourself, were you were you a painter or what? You know, how, where did you start? I drew incessantly, day after day after day after day. So I either I was either kicking a football okay. or drawing, which um, I, I my kids aren't quite that obsessed with it. But yeah, that's all I did really. So <laughs> I would draw anything and everything. I went through a phase of drawing shoes for a while, just sort of just relentlessly drawing the same shoe. Which I think, when you think about it, is what I do now. I yeah. just rehearse the same thing over and over and over until I get something that, that it, it is sort of there, really. So, yeah, so I didn't paint until I was, I think I was about 18, when probably on foundation, where I started to push paint around a little bit. But it is quite intimidating. It's quite a difficult material to handle. I think it takes, you can learn to paint, I think. Mm. I think it's difficult. You can't teach the poetry, but you can teach the mechanics mm -hmm. of painting. And I think it took me a long time to learn mm -hmm. how to actually make marks and to, to leave things alone and to not overwork or underwork. Or, so, so the drawing thing I found more natural and all I do now is paint really. I mean, I, I, I do draw, but I do it almost for a very personal reason rather than a commercial reason. Yeah, well that's, um, I think that's understandable, isn't it? And I think um, a lot of artists, when they hit that brick wall, I don't know how you deal with the brick wall when you know you've just painted too much or, or you've been too close in in your work. They hit that brick wall and they need some headspace, they need to step back. And at that stage, a lot of people do go back to like life drawing or mark, just that basic mark making. Mm. Do, you, do you find it now as a because your work is so highly painted and, and colored and rhythmic and you know. Going back to the pencil now, is that something that sort of resets you? Yeah, I think so. I think also I do try and blast through any problems like that. Yeah. So my, I know some people like to walk away, some people go on holiday, some people sit in a room on their own for a long time. <laughs> my way of dealing with it is to, I tend to attack it actually, okay. and think, right, okay, I don't care where this goes, right. as long as it, it breaks something or it changes the way that I'm thinking or the way that I'm applying... Because everyone, everyone gets into lazy habits as well. Mm. You can do that with colour, you can do that with the kind of marks you're making, the way you prepare something. Mm. You know, everyone can get into those lazy ways of thinking. So for me, it's a way of, I attack it, and, and if it goes somewhere really crazy, then great, in a way. Because mm. in some way, it sort of, it sort of exercises that problem. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I draw, and, and when I draw, it's almost to look rather than to make a, a particular image. Okay. So I'm... Often people will say, well, that's really interesting. The way you draw is really random. And I say, but I, it's just an excuse to look at something mm -hmm. rather than to make a drawing particularly. It's, um, I've, never all, I've, not, I've not always found it comfortable to sit and stare at someone, for mm -hmm. someone to sit for me. Because mm -hmm. in a way, I feel like I'm doing some sort of damage. You know, <laughs> in some way, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm imposing myself. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think if you're doing something with your hands, mm -hmm. it almost legitimizes... Mm -hmm. Yes, I appreciate Fair. that. Yeah, no, I get that. It's, um, but it, it, I mean, it's interesting that you drew for so long and you didn't come into the paint until later, but maybe that was a necessary part of your process. But you sound like you are, you're quite a harsh critic of yourself, that, you're, that you drive yourself till you get it right. You know, whether it's 
getting that shoe right when you were seven mm. or whatever it was and 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 even now that to keep it fresh to keep delivering what you want to are you a harsh critic are you the sort of person that knows when to stand back and say oh no that's actually a really good painting or or are you never quite satisfied <laughs> <laughs> you're never satisfied no i think <laughs> i think what i find most difficult as well is that i find it so open-ended in the first yeah. place mm. and what is right is is just so broad mm. um i think most artists it is a feeling i mm. think when you get to a point where you it's in a way you can't do any more to it mm. but also it, it feels it feels right so it's, it's almost hard to it's almost something that comes out of you without even being able to quantify it yeah um but that is that is the difficult thing that's what makes it so hard i think because mm. everyone can bash away for days and weeks on something mm. but unless you're tuned into the, how it is evolving mm. it's very difficult to know when that moment comes and i get it wrong as well i mean i've gone over so many times yeah. um and, and and under as well where you think yeah that's it <laughs> and you think it's the easy painting you know the thing that's just happened you come in the next day you look at it again and you go oh <laughs> you know that, yeah so it, it's because it is so open-ended it is so difficult to know when mm. i think it's not yes and it's not it's not like maths, you've reached that final two plus two equals four, therefore that's, that's complete. It's not like that at all, is it? It no. can be almost developed, but you can tell when an artist has, you think, oh, you should have stopped five minutes ago, <laughs> you know, or you should have. But it's, it is part of your artistic journey and what makes a good artist is, is learning that actually, is learning. So tell me what your i want to know what it's like to be paul on a on a daily level are you a morning person are you an evening person do you come in do you have to play loud music what is it that how does it look for you take me through your your day well it's changed over the years i think i used to be a six till six kind of person so pre-kids mm. we lived not far from the studio originally so i would walk over so i'd have a nice walk in the morning 20 mm. minutes come in have a cup of tea and then a attack basically um that's changed now it's more I'm, I'm very much into the idea that it's about the quality of what i do rather than the amount i do mm -hmm. um so so my day starts probably around eight ish mm -hmm. depending on you know kids and what whatever else and i'll just literally work until i feel it's kind of i'm starting to do less good work if you know what I mean I get you know when you get to that point where you feel your eyes are tied your head's tied mm -hmm. your decision making is a little bit fuzzy mm -hmm. um so in the past I'd have tried to work through probably whereas now I will stop and I'll mm -hmm. so and, and I'll look at some maybe read a book or, or or look out the window or you know listen to some music I do have music on sometimes sometimes I listen to audio books mm -hmm. uh sometimes it's quiet it just depends where where I'm at with something when it when it's really flowing I think it wouldn't matter. Yeah, I could have a building site next to me. It wouldn't make any, any difference oh, at all. I could, you're, you're gone. <laughs> yeah. And because I'm a rhythm painter as well, and I, I work in a very physical and rhythmic way, mm. in a way when I'm on it, it's, and, it, and it's enjoyable. You know, it's a very fleeting thing. But when you feel that everything's coming off the brush mm. in a way that is almost beyond what you're choosing to do, I mean, you are making decisions, obviously, but mm. it's a great thing. It just doesn't happen very often, sadly. <laughs> well, I think that could be said for a lot of us in a lot of jobs, actually, to be honest. Yeah, for your... But I mean, the, the one thing that is most often commented upon in your paintings, and that's whether you're doing sort of portraiture like here or, 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 or interiors like over here, is there's a real sense of physicality to your, to yeah. your work. There's a lot of energy. And when I look at it, and I, and I often say to people, it's very odd in many ways because when you speak to Paul he's a very humble person he's you know quite quietly spoken and your paintings are just full of energy and it's like your entire body somehow come out through that paintbrush that whole energy level is there so I'm guessing you don't sit on a chair and paint very studiously <laughs> you're, you're doing a lot of moving aren't you it's not a static oh, yeah. enterprise for you so tell me what no. Are you always moving when you're painting? Do you mix your colours first and then hit it, or do you? Is it just a continuous rhythm? No, it's it's it's. I try and feel feel my way through it. So I notice that I will work very quickly in the mornings when right. I'm starting a picture and I'm really trying to build it and get it to a point where I can develop. 
Yeah. Um, and then things slow a little bit, and then there'll be bursts of energy. And I work in it almost like a runway. So there's no chairs this side of the studio yeah. at all. All the chairs are over that way, nowhere near where I'm working. Yeah. Um, so it's on a flat wall. So mm -hmm. it's, it's literally as this is. Mm -hmm. So it's very flat, eye level, and mm -hmm. I'm to and fro, to and fro. Mm -hmm. So everything about the whole situation is geared up personally. So the palette is laid out in a way that, <laughs> this sounds so, so obsessive, but it's, you know, it's the we way it is. We won't judge you, we won't judge you. Okay. So <laughs> I, use, I used to be very heavy on yellow. Yeah. So the, the first color nearest to me was yellow. Mm -hmm. So I'm using slightly different. So, so even things like that I think about, right. you know, where my brush is. So I can work very immediately. Um, so that, that's exactly. interesting because yeah. that comes through in your paintings. That, so you've got both the energy and the structure. It's always being reined in by structure and composition. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's like the paint wants to escape. It wants to move. But yeah. it's being held in in this composition. And, and I'm assuming then that is some, one of the factors, in a way, that leads you to something that's very often observed is that you don't just stick to, you know, painting a jug with flowers in it or painting portraiture. You do move genres. You do move from portraiture mm. to interiors, to well-known people, to less-known people. What, why? Why do you do that? Some people are scared to do that. You're clearly not. What is it that drives you? I see it all, I see it all as the same thing. Right. I think of rooms like a portrait, effectively. Mm. Uh, they, 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 in, incidentally, they started with my... My granddad, who just celebrated his hundredth birthday, actually, wow. he, he's lived in yeah, he's lived in a in a almost the same house for the whole of his life. I think he was nine when he moved in, and um, he lives pretty much in one room. It's a big house, big old Victorian terrace. Mm. And what I love about it is that there's all of those years of family and relatives and people passing through, mm. and it's got this feel that is, and it's so when I paint rooms, I think about that mm -hmm. you know the, the the fact that there's all of this energy's passed through a room mm -hmm. and it's still there in a in a strange way mm -hmm. whether that's a big house small house shed whatever it is and so i try and do that with everything so whether it's a portrait or whether it's a um a room or a or a, an object a bowl of flowers you know whatever it is it, yeah. it i just go at it in the same way yeah, the I mean the the I've got one here that's called um, the writer's the writer's desk, isn't it? The writer's study. Yeah. It does yeah. that, and then the staircase, which is slightly lost in the in the gallery lights, but they look like there's been a lot of people that have trudged up those stairs, mm -hmm. shot down the banisters, and it does look like someone's literally just stepped up from that. They've gone to answer a door, or they've gone to make themselves a cup yeah. of tea. They've got up from the desk. So, although there isn't a figure in there, it is there is a narrative and you seem to I, I sit there and try and work out how you do that and <laughs> and I feel with 25 years behind me I ought to be able to do that and analyze it but sometimes you just don't need to analyze it do you, you just need to enjoy what's shown in front of you if you see what I mean it's but I think, you do I have think, that human element in your yes. paintings and I love the idea of those moments in between things mm. I like painting people sometimes after they've just spoken or just before Mm -hmm. You know, when yeah. it's about to happen or it's, and, and it just, there is a different energy that you get from someone when, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, it's harder when you're doing a commission portrait in a way, because there is an expectation of a particular, um, not a smile, but something more definite. Whereas I love those, when I'm painting a picture for me, mm -hmm. I love the idea of that moment just before someone is about to engage. Yes. I think that's, it's very interesting. Well, there's an anticipation there, isn't there? So there's a higher yeah. energy level, I think, there. Um, and it's one of the, it sort of leads slightly to the, the one of the fundamental drivers of, of humans is, is, is hope, you know, that sense of what's about to happen, what's going to come next, you know. And I'm sure, in Leicester, you're all thinking, please let me go out again. <laughs> that would be lovely. It's a, but it's, funnily enough, it is something that we've all, had to contend with in these last few months in 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 lockdown um this, mm. hope, this anticipation of what's what's coming forward do you think this period is going to inform what you do next do you think somehow this will have got into you know this must have had a profound effect your your partner is a key worker mm. you have now suffered a second lockdown a full lockdown 
you know, you've got little children that have been away from their peer groups for a long time. Do you think this is somehow going to come, you know, I don't know what, where you want to go now, where does Paul Wright go now? And how has <laughs> what's just happened in forming that? The one thing it has done, and I've been very aware of this right from the beginning, mm. is that because I was denied time in the studio, mm. it, it actually made me rethink what I want, how I wanted to make things. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, do I want to make, uh, just an exact, do I want to make 50 paintings a year or do I want to make 10? Mm -hmm. Do I want to focus all of my energy onto 10 really intense, deep pictures? Mm -hmm. Or do I want to make 200 very quick ones and, and, it, and it, it did make me think because it almost forced it upon me to actually slow down mm -hmm. and think, right, okay, why am I using this palette? Why mm -hmm. am I making these marks? Mm -hmm. do, do I want to for a start? Or have I got into a rhythm and a habit of, of doing that anyway? Um, do I want to make smaller pictures? Do I, and, it, and actually it made me sit down and I, I had time to do that to a point as well where I could sit and think about these things. Mm. Um, did and I think that, that, will, that will come out. Okay, so the answers will come out through yeah, the process of painting time. rather than you've got the answers already. Yeah, because I, I'm not one to make bold statements about this is what I'm doing next, you know, I've, I've got this grand plan. Mm -hmm. I've always been very organic in the way that I make things anyway. Mm -hmm. So I, I assume that it will just seep through me and um, who knows? It could be colour, it could be, I, I imagine it will be to do with space in some way, <laughs> somewhere down the line, yeah. you know, because and solitude and, and, but, but I spend quite, I'm, I'm alone in the studio often. So mm -hmm. to me, it, being alone isn't a bad thing. I don't see it as a negative thing. Mm -hmm. But of course, when she starts to take things out away from people socially, yeah. that changes everything again. Um, because you've not, you've no longer got a choice. Whereas of course, I've got a choice to be in here on my own. But uh, I, it will play out, it will play out one way or another. One way how you see it. So, I mean, obviously the, the one thing that's very remarkable, whatever you're painting, is that you really, your composition comes through via the colour, you know, I mean, it comes through the energy, but you, you are a colourist, you're definitely a colourist, you, and you are quite an expressionist as well. I mean, you abstract out scenes, but you're not, it's not an abstract painting, not, it doesn't matter what you're, you're painting, but why colour? What is it for you? What is it that colour gives you that, let's say, doing light and shade, you know, doesn't, I suppose? I think this is really hard to... Uh, it's very, I've thought about this long and hard, actually. Um, I do organise a painting through colour, mm. which is complicated because colour is so complicated in itself. It, again, it's so open-ended. You, you know, there are certain things I try and work with in terms of complementary colours, but actually there's so many ways of bouncing colour off, off other colour. You can, there's so much you can do with it. I think I'm not a, I'm not a subtle painter. So in a way, the colour, I'm not subtle with colour either in, in lots of ways. Mm -hmm. But I don't mind that because I, I enjoy colour. I love looking at colour. I love looking at artists that use colour as well. Mm -hmm. and, one, and some of my biggest influences are people like de Kooning and Rothko and all sorts of, I mean, I, I love all sorts of different painters, but especially ones that use colour. And mm. I think, I think if it's there, why not, you know, make the most of it? Because it evokes so much emotion in people as well. It does, it does. You can lift and you can suppress a mood through colour mm. alone, actually. But I mean, if I go up into small details, like little corners of your painting, and I think that just, how does that possibly make sense? And then I step back and it, and it all focuses itself and makes complete sense. And I, I can't tell you the amount of times I've stood in front of a painting with um, clients and they're, and they're going right up and they think, well, how, how does that work? Why has he got purple next to green? That's on her face, you know, that's ridiculous. But you do seem to be able to see colour very differently to other people when, you know, not many people can organise. We have obviously the famous Scottish colourist from the 20th mm -hmm. century and we do have good, um, good artists working in, in colour, but there's not many that are really, that have really nailed the sort of, almost the science of it, the sort of engineering of it really. And you seem to find it, well, it seems to come effortlessly. Is that, is that really the case? I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Big question. I, I'm not, I don't know, it's so hard. I think maybe through practice, through doing. Okay. It's something I've learned to understand more. 
I think. And I know what it can do and I know what it can't do. You know, I know that there are things that, I mean, they go horribly wrong as well. I mean, you're looking at things that are finished that, that have been accepted, yeah. but actually there's some hideous things get made <laughs> that I look at and think, no, that's, that's not working. But one of the things you were talking about looking in a corner of a picture and, and seeing something happening that was almost independent of the, the picture itself. Actually, I love the idea that you can experience something from, at different points. Yes. So if you step back, actually they read as fairly, you know, fairly regular pictures, but then you can walk up and all of a sudden it starts to become other things, almost mm -hmm. like little abstract paintings stuck together. Mm -hmm. And actually I love the idea, you, you can have that duality in them. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it when people respond to that and they, they, they see that. But it almost sort of loops back to talking about your grandpa's room with all those different people that have passed through it and, and happening celebrations, birthdays, whatever that's happened through it. Each part of the room will have had, you know, the sherry's been dropped one Christmas when grandpa fell yeah. off the side of the sofa or whatever it is. But, you know, there is, that is what a home is, isn't it? It's all those different areas. So, so perhaps that's what gives it, it its, its depth and perspective. But... You touched there on, on artists that had influenced you, Rothko and de Kooning. Are they, were you exposed to much art as you were growing up or is that something that you've sort of thought out? No, I think my parents didn't, I, I think one of the reasons I went to art college was that I think in a way my parents didn't really know much about it. So I don't think they were scared of me going into a profession like being an artist because I don't think they really knew what it was because I come from a very regular working class family that you know yeah. people didn't go to university people didn't really do anything other than got a job you know and, and paid the bills so in a way I, I first started looking at paintings when I was at junior school this can sound really strange I was at junior school yeah. and I'd done a couple of drawings and the teacher said you're finding this way too easy aren't you and I said yes and um, they said well she, she was connected with a, a, an FE college and said, well, would you like to go on a Saturday to a, an art college? I said, yeah, I'd be up for that. That'd be great. And so off I went to work with 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds. And all of a sudden there were pictures by Rembrandt and by... And of course it opens a whole new world because you start to look at things completely differently. And people, the, the conversation was different as well. Even though I was very young, they mm. would talk to me about making pictures you know, and, and organizing things and why one thing went there and one thing could go there. Mm. And um, I think that's when I, and my early interest was in people like Peter Howson, mm -hmm. Ken Curry, mm -hmm. uh, and those guys, I think because they were so physical, they were so, yeah, it, very, yeah. so definite and mm. they, they appealed to me, they still do. I still like Howson's work now. Um, and then I started to look more at back, and obviously there was always the Impressionists and there was Van Gogh and uh, it's very broad. I, I, I take things from so many different artists and it's, it's grown with me. So, you know, anywhere I go, I'll buy books. I'll be looking, see whether there's something that I can, I can look at and get something from, you know, everyone borrows, don't they, from, from everyone think, else. I think you do and, and it's how you absorb it and, and then bring it back out. But I mean, mm. if, if there's artists watching that are really just trying to find their way, what, what's your suggestion? You know, what's your suggestion to your younger self? I don't, I don't know really, because I think things fell, and sometimes it's just serendipity, isn't it? Things fall for you at various times when you really need them. And, so, and it's hard to explain why that happens. I worked really hard when I was, I mean, I worked harder, 12, days, 12 hours a day, seven days a week for a long, long time. It just consumed me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it does still, but obviously this life becomes bigger. Mm -hmm. and, and it's good that it becomes bigger because it, it feeds into your world a little bit more as well. Mm -hmm. But I think I just work very hard to be, become, to, to become more proficient, mm -hmm. to, to be able to technically do more, I mm -hmm. think, and to try and understand why that artist was doing that and how the hell they got that to look like that. Mm -hmm. And how can I make that look like that? You know. And, unpicking things and talking to people constantly about what they were doing and why they were doing it. I was, I, I think it's a great time actually to be a young artist because now I think a lot of artists are accessible. You know, I get people will message me and say, could you help me with this? Or could you give me some advice? Or whereas when I was starting, I met, 
I met very few artists because yeah. of course the internet wasn't it mm. wasn't the same. No. Um, but I think it's just work. You just have to work. Uh, yeah. I've never worked. So. I've never I've never worked on my technique as in a style. I've mm. always allowed that to be what it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's often a mistake to think that you can paint a particular way. I think you paint the way you paint. Mm -hmm. I think it's what you then put into that and what you do with it that, that counts, I think. Yeah. Because you do, you mix oil and spray paint at times, don't you? You use both on the, yeah. on the <laughs> canvas. I mean, it's very irreverent of you, but I love it. I know, I, it's <laughs> terrible, don't tell anyone. <laughs> Um, no, unfortunately for you, Paul, it's quite obvious in some work, so you can't hide it. <laughs> but it's, it. <laughs> that shows a real confidence, um, I think, on your part. And I, and I like the adventure that that comes with because, you know, spray paint is very much from the street, isn't it? And it's got a sort of freedom and liberty to it. Is that a deliberate choice to use the spray paint or is it because it delivers an aesthetic that you're looking for? I used to I used to mix down the oil and put it through um, actual spray canisters, oh, okay. but it was really it was really clumsy and I didn't like I couldn't manipulate it enough, so I actually started using and I know quite a few graffiti artists and they said well you should try these, and they were oil based and, and I thought well I'll, I'll give them a go and of course you can do so much with them if mm -hmm. you if you learn how to do like anything mm -hmm. you learn how to manipulate the cap and everything else I think it was um, I always thought that if 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 Turner was around now, he'd probably have a go with them, wouldn't he? I would have you, you know, yeah, he used to spit on the sunshine paint. in the corner with a, a <laughs> with the yellow. Yeah, splatter the light think, across the ships. You know, it'd be fine. Yeah, I think Picasso would have used computers, wouldn't he? And and spray cans and whatever else was available to. I think it's all about getting what you want on that surface, mm. and I think it's just another tool. You know, I'll use anything really if it works. I think that's. Uh, I think you know, artists are of their time. I think you've touched on something quite important there, and you know, you have different access depending on what era you're born in, aren't you? And of course, yeah. you're very much in a digital age as well. Um, you know, so you are able to look at a lot more images of other artists' work and be able to follow that up by going to see exhibitions and shows. I mean, normally, not now, but is, do you try and get to your, your, you know, your eyes in front of actual pieces? Do you get to go to exhibitions and galleries or are you flat out yeah. in, the, in the studio? Um, yeah, I'm the weirdo that goes to the National Gallery just before it opens in the morning <laughs> <laughs> and then run in and go and get, yeah, because I, I love spending time on my own with certain pictures. There's a couple by um, Van Dyke and there's obviously the Rembrandts. Yeah. That, <laughs> When you're on your own, you can kind of absorb them a bit more. But yeah, so yes, I do. I, yeah, it's important to see things. It just is. to see the hand, just mm -hmm. to see how the hand's made something is, is, is fascinating. Because mm -hmm. everyone's different. Everyone makes things so differently. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you, portraiture is very close to your heart, isn't it? And you have painted many of your family members and presumably mm. friends, and you've painted well-known people. Is there... I mean, you would imagine there is an intimacy and a love and affection. When you're painting your son and daughter, for instance, it must be a different experience painting them um, than Churchill or you know, yeah. whatever it is, you know, David Bowie, whatever it is. It's, you know, I very much enjoy your, the ones that you have an emotional connection with. But equally, some of your models that you use, um, you can tell there's a relationship. Somehow you bring that energy through, you know, there's some sort of, professional friendship that's emerged over the time you know i think this lady here you, you've used mm. a few times haven't you and yeah you've you've definitely um all the paintings of her have you, there's clearly a sort of a good working relationship there so how different is and how much does that inform you or is it not is it just something that happens subconsciously really with you when you're you know if you're painting a awesome. daughter it's uh yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's i've painted her a lot recently <laughs> um, but, yeah, there is, it's an interesting, again, it's another interesting question because I do think that so much of the picture comes from me, mm. so much of it comes from the way I, I mean, often I would, I would kind of fire myself up emotionally mm -hmm. if I'm painting a portrait and it doesn't necessarily need to be the kids mm. to try and really trigger some sort of, whether it translates through the hand, I don't know, but to, to play music that gets me fired up. 
sometimes play uh, think about the I think about the kids all the time, obviously. Mm. But you know, the more you think about them, sometimes you know, it can make you feel quite full of emotion. And sometimes that can come through in the way that I make marks, maybe. So mm. maybe sometimes it's indirect rather than direct. But mm -hmm. I am aware of it. You are aware right. that, yeah, yeah. Do you enjoy it or is it a distraction? That sort of emotional connection, that intensity? Well, I quite enjoy it because it's so personal and because it's so private as well. Mm. I know people see the result, but mm. the actual doing is so private. You know, the act of making a painting is, I mean, that's where it's at for me. You know, that's, that's the thing. Mm. It's me standing here fighting, you know, the, the image on, mm. the, on the canvas. And that's, I can't share that with anyone. It doesn't matter how much you film someone doing it. You can't share how that feels when you're really in that moment. You know, mm. it's, it's the thing, like David Hockney said, no one knows what an empty room looks like. Mm. You know, it's, it's got that same mm. intrigue. You know, it's, it's so, it's so for, for me and, and, and in that moment. That it, but, but it does feed in. It must be there. I couldn't paint anyone I didn't like, I don't think. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> We won't, we won't name names here. I think we'll leave that there. <laughs> um, no, I think actually people can pick up on it. I think people are able to pick up on it. Um, and I think actually with the way that you paint, um, I think, you know, if you were to paint the interior of your grandpa's house, you would definitely feel the love, mm. the history, the family connection within that. But... I mean, the art, art world, you, you know, you're an artist and you paint, but ultimately you, you do need to, you know, pay your rent, as it were. You need to put the roof yep. over the food on the table. And the art world is, has changed significantly. Like you've just said, you know, you can now access a lot more art and it is more available to all sorts of people. But it is, you know, it does have its inherent problems. It can be quite commercially led and it can be, it can sort of, um, lose the artist possibly it can just be a canvas or a piece of paper or a sculpture what defines success for you what is it that you think you know you've got you go home and you sit down and you're eating your dinner with your family and you think do you know what job done yeah that being able to do this every day is probably it really because i never thought i would because i didn't really know what it was i would never really met an artist so i didn't really know what it meant until i started doing it Mm -hmm. And then it sort of happened by chance in a weird way. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't plan it necessarily. Mm -hmm. But I think that and being able to pay the bills, I think, I mean, as boring as it sounds, mm -hmm. I've never wanted to be a, a rich man, which is probably a good thing going into <laughs> being a painter. Good for but, all of us, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, yeah, just I think just being able to turn up every day and know that I can do this. Mm -hmm. that I'm lucky enough to, lucky is a funny word, but fortunate enough to to do this every day if i choose to which is you know a lot of people can't and i'm aware of that so it's it's almost that being able to go through that physical process it's not seeing your name and lights necessarily it's not no. it, it's not about sales particularly it is literally about allowing you to do what you love yeah i think if if i could send someone to represent me in everything that happens publicly with 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 me I'd be very happy with that because I have no interest. In, <laughs> no, is that's not quite true. Just get on with it. I think. I, well, I think it is. It is very much the act of making something that I. I it just is. It never gets boring. Mm. So to be able to do that every day, when I hear about, you know, I know people do all sorts of kinds of jobs, mm. but I am one of those few people that's fortunate enough to do something that really does. I. I don't get bored of doing this. Mm. You know, I. I look for although I'm apprehensive before I start a picture, I do look forward to going, going to work every day. It's great, you know, and that's pretty much, you know, that's reward enough, I think, for, that, that is success. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, I have to say, I share it with you. I thought, you know, that I, uh, I can understand that completely. My, you know, I followed my heart and did, did what I did. And it's not always the easiest path, is it? But it's, mm -hmm. if you're brave enough, and you know you can hang on by the thing. <laughs> you can you can go through it, but it's it's a great reward. But it's, I mean, certainly for any artists that are watching that are trying to find their way, it is as you say. I think a lot, a lot of hard work. Keep at it and um, see where you're. Yeah. Just just keep getting better. I think and, and trying. To I think it's. 
I do think it's harder now as well than it was when I started out. I think now there is that carrot of, you, can, you know, artists are making fast money. Um, mm. Whereas I came into this knowing it wasn't a money game, you know, that it wasn't about money. Mm. But I, I think, the, like you were saying about the commercial side of the art market changing so much. Mm. It, is, it is a different art world now to the one that I spent my first sort of 10 years in, I mm. think. So I've come from a slightly different, I think, a slightly different time in a way, mm. um, which I'm grateful for, really. <laughs> no, I am as well. And I think art colleges have changed significantly. It's all about yeah. sort of making a statement more than maybe, you know, technique. And, and they mm. aren't, in my opinion, um, shown what it's going to be like when they step out there. So I'm sure it's been very useful listening to you today and listening to the fact that you've had to work your socks off. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and that you get it wrong. Even someone as talented as you, you get it wrong on a, on a regular basis Absolutely. really you know and that it's fine that you just got to keep working through it so thank you for taking the time today paul it's been a pleasure as always um and i will speak to you very soon i hope great stuff thanks jenny thanks <laughs>